My name is Stephanie Cook and I'm the gallery director of the Luminary and I oversee the residency and the exhibitions and one of the first things I did as the gallery director is I invited Andrea Yarbrough to carry in our fall exhibition which is called In Care of Practice. Andrea Yarbrough invited to this exhibition Darrow Knott, Blair Smith, Nina Amina Minor and Rashad Dahani Lawler Queen to contribute works to the exhibition. So Andrea, she built a boat over the summer, casually. <laughs> There's different sites of harm historically for black folks. The boat is historically a very much a traumatic space for black folks. So how to think about that transformation of a space of harm to a space of care. So her first move is reclaiming that space, um, not only through the reuse of wood, but like reclaiming that space as one that could be through her work and the work of others as a space of care and that being emblematic of that process. Rashad created a barrel that is reminiscent of the barrel that one of the first black women, at least first documented black women in St. Louis used to escape St. Louis on the Underground Railroad to Canada. Uh, her name's Caroline Quarles. Rashad did a lot of research to think through, is this person recognized in the city and found that she wasn't. As it lives right now in the luminary, it's a barrel that's been transformed into a comfortable chair, so a place of rest. So hopefully that would be something that someone would experience back then, but unfortunately that is not. And then also a quilt that marks Caroline's journey. <laughs> Elsewhere in the space, uh, Blair Smith offered a track of black girls in creation and play. Um, she is a curator and arts educator and worked on programming within museums. And so what is on loop in this kind of creative, you know, like musical weaving is black girls playing and talking and thinking about art and you can hear them creating. Adara created a quilt that's thinking about the hex quilt code. She really identifies with code and coding. And so for her, it was a way using quilting to think about uh, quilting as code and that how the hex pattern or the hourglass pattern was used during the Underground Railroad time as like signals between people, as like spaces that were safe and spaces that were not. And then finally, Nina Amina Minor is uh, a movement artist and also a filmmaker. And she provided a film of a choreographic dance project called uh, Without Ever Leaving the Ground She Flew, thinking about black flight, both in terms of the Great Migration, but also how black flight represents itself in gospel, how it represents itself in the works of Toni Morrison and the Songs of Solomon, and weaving those together, again, the word, using the word weaving. When people are in the space, I think that a huge thing that Andrea is thinking about is accountability and deep listening and witnessing as a way to both interact with the work but also a way to move forward um, as a collective. The exhibition is also peppered with what Andrea calls um, sittable objects. So they are stools that she built over the course of the month prior to the exhibition. And so they're two cedar benches and they're one cedar benches, but they're in proximity to the work and really just sitting and thinking about how, like what questions come up and where does the work lead you instead of perhaps ways that we usually move through art spaces, which is rather quick or taking in quick images, but really sitting and thinking about what are you witnessing in front of you and how could you not just listen, but do a practice of deep listening that isn't always um, necessitates like a quick answer. If you want to learn more about Andrea Yarbrough's uh, projects and practice, they can go to incareofblackwomen.us. Um, Andrea just released a new website and it has a lot of information on the past projects as well as some um, questions that people could peruse through and like think about how they work could work differently. And then the, if people want to come see the exhibition, it will be open through November 13th. And gallery hours are Wednesday and Thursday, 12 to 5 p.m. and Friday and Saturday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then also if, there's, if they're interested in coming in an off time, they can just email us and we can try to set up a different time. My name is Aloha Michelle. I am the founder and owner of Black Coffee. During the time when the world completely shut down on us, I started thinking about black and brown roasters and farmers and those people that, that make this coffee, that grow this coffee. Black coffee 
started as a pop-up, collaborating with these businesses, whether it's um, Thrift Shit, which is a thrift store, or Nebula, which is a, a you know a co-working space. Those were the, the people. It was my segue to the luminary. Now that I have space in here, or Black Coffee has space, y'all have been asking me about my beans. Like, where can I buy Black Coffee beans? And I'm like, Right, I need to get my own beans because I would like to go up on the wall with these these wonderful brands and these roasts too. Like black coffee should be a part of that as well. So that's the next step. I am attempting to take my little self to Ethiopia and learn and source and, and create relationship with the farmers and ship my beans back here, roast them locally. Uh, package them and send them off. My hours now are Wednesday through Saturday, nine till three. And I have a GoFundMe right now uh, that will fund this trip to Africa uh, to source beans, ship them back, pack it, roast them and package them and give them to you.